Of course, education is being disrupted like any other industry. And we have seen industry for industry vanishing, big champions that once were dominating a particular sector going, and this will accelerate. And I'm convinced that the global education market in 10 to 20 years will look completely different. There may be globally perhaps 50 leading business schools still uh, surviving the current business models where they do quite expensive face-to-face -face education, expensive academic research, and these will be the Ivy League type schools of the world. There will be a fantastic growth of high quality online scalable programs, including MBA programs. So there will be really good programs where for a few thousand dollars, you can get a high quality MBA education. As a business school, we have to really think what will be our future value proposition? How will we feature in this disruptive education world? And our thinking is really that, um, uh, will there be Ivy League type schools in America going forward that deliver high impact, face-to-face, -face, experiential and transformative learning? And my view is, of course, there will be Harvard, MIT, Stanford, of course. Now, the next question is, of course, will there be European Ivy League type schools? I mean, the, the leading institutions, and of course there will be. You have London Business School, you have IMD, you have INSEAD. There will be schools playing that business model. And of course, the important question for us is, I mean, will there be Ivy League type schools in Asia? Over 50% of the future growth will be in Asia. So of course we will have Ivy League type schools in Asia. So the big question is, of course, who will they be? And my reading here is um, that they are unlikely to really come, let's say, from the big countries like China, India, Japan, for the very simple reason that they are too domestically oriented. You need a global mindset for this. And so if you look at the, then you look at Hong Kong and Singapore, they are small countries or small regions and um, they're connecting many parts of, of the world. I think Singapore has a sweet spot here, has, has a unique opportunity and, and also is actually quite nicely positioned. Hong Kong is really in the greater China ecosystem. Whereas if you look at Singapore, geographically, it is really between China, India, Southeast Asia. Uh, the population here is quite cosmopolitan. The, the, the domestic population, if you will, we have people from Malaysians, Malays, Indians, Chinese here. So the cultural mix in, in Singapore is, is very rich and connects very well to all parts of Asia here. And on top of that, I mean, Singapore historically has been really a platform for MNCs. There's hardly another city where there are as many MNCs located running regional and even global headquarters from Japan, from Korea, from the US, from Europe, from China. Many of them have set up their, their regional businesses here. So there's a unique ecosystem in our, in our city in Singapore. And I believe it is really up for a Singapore institution to claim this prize of being one of the Ivy League type schools of Asia. And we at the NUS Business School do everything possible to make sure that the NUS MBA will be a global Ivy League type school MBA, where people will come to study Asia and Asia and the world, simply because we are providing this ecosystem in Singapore. What really, really excites me about our school is that we are so international. We are truly global. We have students all the way from China, India, Southeast Asia, Australia, Middle East, the whole of Europe, and also even a few students from Africa and uh, South America, North America. So it's a truly global, cosmopolitan platform where you get perspectives from all over the world. I find this personally very, very enriching and interesting, and it's from a research and teaching angle incredibly exciting. We are so proud of our MBA program simply because it really enables students to become 
who they want to become. We have one of the world's most transformative MBA education experience and definitely the most in our competitive set. And what's the beauty of our program? It is at the sweet spot in terms of duration. There are many one year or less MBA programs and, and I, I personally just feel that is too short to learn so many new skills and knowledge and at the same time to truly transform who you are. And then there are some programs that are of course 24 months and personally I think just that that's a little long you know, to be out of, the, out of a job for, for two years plus. But for us, it's, it's slightly less than a year and a half, and that's perfect. So you have the time to really internalize all the knowledge. And on the other hand, you have enough time to play, to try, to drive, um, to really explore who you want to become. I find it so exciting that our program really provides a platform where students can take on everything they try to, to explore and try to drive and, and the outcome is really that they arrive at a spot that really sets them up for their career in the next 10 years. Many candidates and even friends ask me, or the children of friends ask me, why should I come to Singapore to study? Over 80% of our candidates are not from Singapore. They're from all over the world. And that really allows them to, to connect with all these different cultures, to uh, understand the mindsets, the business environments from these countries and cultures, and you have a network afterwards doing business in almost any part of this world. So I personally would find it incredibly boring to go to a business school where 70, 80 percent are from that country of that business school. So I think um, this is something unique in Singapore because Singapore is so small and therefore really attracts people from everywhere. We really aim to make the MBA education experience the most transformative experience that is out there in the marketplace. We want to really be at the top of this, this game. And this has been our focus for the last many years in driving experiential and transformative learning. And as we discussed before, education is being disrupted. We really try to change our MBA students to become the best they can be in their chosen area. We are the first MBA program that has a dual core. So we have an academic core where you learn all of this. Um, net present value and, and, and all these theories we have in management here. But we have an equally weighted and important core that's called the experiential core. That means every student goes through this core. And this core really starts with a, a boot camp of a week called Launch Your Transformation. So before you even come into the MBA, we really want to go deep down inside you to get you ready. This is from a team that, from a former McKinsey team, designed real deep transformation bootcamp we have. And the objectives are really know yourself, then stretch yourself and empower yourself. So that is really that you come out from this bootcamp with what, I am, what am I going to do in my MBA here? And the next is what we call the MBA survival kit. And again, a lot of experiential parts, it does everything from elevator pitch to, to presentations, but also how do you run consulting projects, project management, stakeholder alignment, McKinsey mindset, uh, Minto principle, all of these skills you need to have. On top of this stuff like ta Tableau, uh, analytics, and even Excel. And my objective here really is after the MBA survival kit, every one of our students can stand up and give an elevator pitch can run a consulting project and can play Excel like other people play piano, right? So this is the MBA survival kit, which, which sort of equalizes everyone and brings everyone to a certain level. And the last one of the experiential core is what we call the MBA consulting project, which is a capstone module. And what it really brings together is everyone you have done in your experiential core 
and in your core modules, your marketing, your finance, your corporate strategy, and so on, and you apply it in a real life consulting project. And then we have, of course, academic electives and experiential electives. And here is where you can really customize your journey. So if you tell me, I want to be a tech entrepreneur, or I want to be a, consulting in, a consultant in marketing, or I want to be in finance and private equity, I can almost tell you, look, here's a recommended journey of, of, of your MBA. And um, the, the, the academic um, electives you do, then you, you select your specializations, such as digital business, analytics supply chain, marketing, consulting, so you can pick your academic electives and that gives you the knowledge base. So you know the cutting edge theories and knowledge, which is, I think, very important. Then what comes in addition to this is the, are the experiential electives. And there is a ton of, of things you can do. You can do case competitions that focus on tech startups. You can uh, join our club ecosystem. We have, a, we have an incredibly active MBA club ecosystem. And I can honestly tell you, if you tell me I want to become a tech entrepreneur and you're not in the entrepreneurship club and you're not in the, entrepreneur, uh, in, in the technology club, I don't believe you. <laughs> so if you're really serious, you should be in both of these clubs and maybe in a third one, maybe in a strategy club because you need strategy or in the marketing club. So you pick maybe three clubs you go into and you become really active. And what these clubs give you, they have an alumni board. They have a corporate advisory board. The former presidents, vice presidents of these clubs, they're, they're emeritus members who help. So you are plugging into a club ecosystem here where senior people who have been in the club and industry that are connected to the club come together for fireside chats, for CEO presentations and hosting. And these clubs are a platform. For example, if there is a management consulting project that, is involved, that involves technology, it would be homed or housed in the technology club here. And if we have the CEO, let's say we recently had a CEO of one of the biggest banks in Singapore address uh, our, our student body here. Of course, who should be the MC of such an event? Who should be on the student panel or, or the discussion panel of such an event? This would be members from the finance club. So you can see as you go through this one year, one year, this year and a half uh, MBA journey, at the end of it, your LinkedIn profile should have all of these advisors, alumni, speakers in your LinkedIn account. And when you then go for job hunt for, to, to, to find your dream job after your MBA, you don't even need career services that much beyond helping you with case cracking and how you present your CV in the best way for this company versus that company and so on. But in terms of network, you should have the network on your LinkedIn already. You should know the lingo of the industry, the key issues of the industry, what, who are the movers and shakers in this industry. You are ready to roll. Our MBA has an incredibly global footprint. Not only are we connecting India with China, China with Southeast Asia and, and the whole of Asia with the rest of the world, but our students really have the opportunity to do exchange programs with the world's best business schools with over 60 of them. And they include Yale, London Business School, Kellogg, IE, Peking University, SEEPS. So students really connect to Asia here at NUS and then they go and exchange for a few months, potentially adding an internship after that, where they really dive into now a very US-centric environment or a very European-centric environment, or they really want to expect China firsthand. Like any good business school, for us is not filling a class. 
for us is really how do we get the best mix of students together who really add a lot of value to each other. And obviously to get into NUS business school, you would have to be incredibly smart. Right? That shows through a great first degree and or a great GMAT and or a great career development so far. So this is what we are looking for. This is sort of the foundation. And on top of that, when I interview, I really look at, do you have energy and are you curious? If you don't have energy, you're not going to move things. We want to have future leaders here in our MBA. So we need you to have the energy. And if you're not curious and you just sit there, you're not going to develop. So we are offering you a platform to play with here, to explore, to test drive, to network, to experience. So you need to have energy and you need to be curious to make the most out of it. So I'm always very confident that the students we admit are incredibly smart and also have the potential to really be future movers and shakers in whatever area they chose. And here we love diversity. So I really love to have people who come from nonprofit, from healthcare, from a legal background, from all different corners of this world. To me, it is, it is not the individual, it's, it's really the mix of the student body that makes it so incredibly rich. And us being in Singapore, being able to recruit from globally, basically, allows us to really put a class together that is an absolute joy and positive energy and a fantastic learning environment. And, and that is for everyone. That is for the students as well as for faculty. Our focus is really on a transformative education experience. And that automatically means if you are a potential student who is so concerned about getting an A or an A+, you're in the wrong business school. So our focus really, we want to help you become the best you can be in your chosen area. And the nice thing is that about the culture overall in the program, everyone understands that. And we have a beautiful club, it's called Sandbox. And Sandbox is where people, this is completely voluntary, but they stand up and talk about something that is very important to them, really truly moved them. And I've seen people laugh and cry in those talks where people shared incredibly personal stories and challenges and, and things they've overcome. And to me, it changes how people and how students look at each other. Even faculty go to these talks sometimes, right? So if you know what people struggled with. So we had single moms in the MBA program. We had people with massive health challenges pulling through being in the MBA program. People who completely failed in a, in a startup and, 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 and so on. And now you meet these people, you know so much more about them. You, you connect and relate to each other in a very different way. It is not competitive anymore. It is really then collaboration, helping each other, understanding each other. Uh, we even changed the grading system at the business school. We used to have grades A plus, A, A minus, B plus, and so on. And then everyone is fighting over from an A to an A plus. And what it does, it inhibits risk taking and it spoils our culture. It makes it more competitive. So now we have a very simple grading structure. It's, it's distinction and it is merit and then a few people get a pass and that is it. You can then focus on how do I learn the most from the subject. And the other thing we want to encourage people, we had in the past, sometimes we heard, oh, I'm Prof, shall I really take the subject? I'm not very good at it, but I, I think I should learn it, but I don't want to spoil my transcript. Now I tell people, look, you know, who cares? Go for a pass, go for a merit but plug this hole you have here and fix it and, and, and get the skills you need. So this new grading system is really aligned with our culture of, of development and helping you and not anymore in ranking our students and then giving A plus and B minus.
Of course, I talked to many, many employers who recruited our students. And what they really appreciate is that they are, of course, technically incredibly competent. They got a world-class, rigorous MBA curriculum here, and they know that stuff. Simply because also we focus, we don't try to do too much. We focus on the core and our students master that incredibly well. And on top of that, thanks to our experiential and transformative learning, they're quite incredibly good in all of the soft skills. So they're effective in an organization. They can run projects. They can drive change. They understand what are the potential blockages here for, for running a project, where they can find allies for their projects. I mean, these are, these are skill sets that sometimes take a little bit of sinking in. It's not that you can hothouse many of those things. Our students, many of them, would have had leadership positions running clubs. If you run clubs, you're dealing with peers. You can't tell people do this. You have to craft a value proposition for them to be on your side, right? And I think for many of the things, the same as when you run a, the MBA consulting project. So a lot of the stuff we are doing is getting students to be active on projects and in in initiatives and drive those. And if you're a business, you don't hire an MBA to run operations for you in general. You want the MBA to come in and help you to shape future strategy for your business. And I think this is something where our students truly shine.